Cyril, the character everyone hates apparently. Man, a lot of people just straight up don't like Cyril. Whether it comes down to his boring first impression personality of a Rhea fanboy, a non-student outsider competing with Flane, lol good luck dude, his generic design, and unimpressive personal skill and bases, Cyril is a character that was destined for ridicule from the beginning. I'm not coming into this video arguing that he's the best unit or secretly most depth and intensely good character in the game, but the goal here is to outline reasons why I personally think he gets flack, and it's also to convince some non-believers to think Cyril's viability in a more positive way. So yeah, as far as first impressions go, he's really not doing a whole lot. I mean, I love Rhea too, don't get me wrong. But it's not exactly the most charming introduction to a non-student character. Cyril is similarly the easiest character to recruit as it's just a level 10 Byleth requirement. Problem is though, Flane is super charming, cute, fun, quirky, looks really unique off the bat, directly related to relevant story characters, and has a way better design. I mean, look, I have some pretty hipster fire emblem opinions, but even I have to concede here. Cyril, as far as first impressions go, has no chance. But okay, let's say you aren't superficial and willing to give this Almyron Rhea fanboy a shot. You recruit him and check his stats out, and okay, he's your est? This early? That's not really an est, but okay. He has aptitude, which I guess is cool, so he must have amazing growths then. Um, just kidding, they're actually garbage? For growths, Cyril has a 35% HP growth, 20 strength, 15 magic, 40 dexterity and speed, 30 luck, 10 defense and res, and 15 charm. Okay, well since aptitude adds plus 20 to all growth rates, it then gets adjusted to this. 55 HP, 40 strength, 35 magic, 60 dexterity and speed, 50 luck, 30 defense and resistance, and 35 charm. Let's get one thing straight, it's not the best use of aptitude I've ever seen. However, this does, in his defense, give him the highest BST for growths in the game, which is a good thing. There's still the issue of his not so good bases, which are, uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty bad. The lowest BST in the game by a fair margin bad. Also, because there are no enemy commoners in the game, he won't be scaling off generic enemy class growths. So the longer you wait to recruit him, the worse he ends up being. And if you don't know what I mean here, recruited students scale their levels off generic enemy class growths plus their own. So for example, if you recruit Ingrid who has a 35% strength growth, she will actually scale to your level using the generic enemy class growth for Pegasus Knights. So 35 for her, 15% of a class growth for a maddening mode Pegasus Knight, and suddenly Ingrid has a 50% strength growth, that is hilarious. So the longer you wait to recruit someone like Ingrid, the higher the strength she's going to get on recruitment at the expense of your ability to train her in weapon ranks. But this does not apply to Cyril. So, okay, yeah, he takes time to get the ball rolling, but honestly, if we're not talking about maddening mode, Level 10 Byleth is pretty easy to get by like chapter 3, and he's not really going to be that far behind anyway, because Maddening Mode already cuts EXP by a lot. Regardless, starting a bit behind is something that Cyril is going to have to deal with as far as stats go, and for some people that could just spell the bench. <sighs> okay, so this is supposed to be a positive Cyril video. So, okay, you recruit Cyril early, you want to use him, what will you expect? Oh my god, his stats are- Stop. Just, just not, just stop. Don't just look at his stats. Look at his weapon ranks instead. He has legit, incredibly sick boons and weapon ranks. He starts with C in both axes and bows and has five boons. Axe, bow, lance, riding, and flying. Not only does this make him a very flexible unit as far as combat classes to get into, but he has a very clear path to Wyvern Lord, a class which will very easily help patch his meh, strength growth to 50% because he basically starts as a brigand that can go into the wyvern class line. And at the very least, if he has had terrible luck with growing strength, then he can get 18 at base for the master class. But his biggest selling point, I think, which is even better on maddening since bows become way more useful for range and curved shot because enemies are stupid in that mode, are his combat arts. Mainly point blank volley at C plus. C frickin plus dude. 
getting that art takes like five fights and a single dedicated lesson in bows. Point Blank Volley is a nerfed Brave Bow, except it's in a combat art. It allows Cyril to strike two consecutive times and also boosts his hit rate by 10%. The great thing about it is that this is applicable with things like killer bows, or literally anything stronger than a brave bow normally is. At C+, Leone is the only other character that gets this art, and that's at A. So with very little investment, you get one of the best combat arts in the game. He also gets Lance Jab at A, which is also stupid on Ciro because it scales off speed, which he has a freaking 60% growth in before any modifiers. He also gets Vengeance, which is like situationally good, and Armored Strike, which is like... You have other options. Just point blank volley the guy instead. <laughs> Dedicated early game archers, except for like Leone, I guess, and Claude, struggle to make a bigger impact than chip damage with curb shot if they aren't just straight up rally botting, like Ignatz kinda has to do to stay relevant for a while. So Cyril being able to do more damage than just curb shotting things from the beginning is going to be an asset. Also, he gets Battalion Desperation at C-Rank Authority, and with his Mega Speed, will actually be more consistent and useful than other Battalion Desperations like Hanuman Gonzalez over here. What I'm saying is, with little investment, he's actually immediately useful and unique to the cast. With normal rotation, he can get to the most busted classes in the game with relative ease. That's where I believe his quote-unquote growth unit, which isn't really a good descriptor anyway because he can immediately make an impact, class type really shines. I think his viability can also depend on what route you're on. Golden Deer has Leone and Black Eagles has Petra, who do similar jobs, have similar boons, and have better availability than Cyril. Which are points that can make Cyril not necessary to have on your team. But mileage can vary with those units. I'm using Leone heavily in my maddening run right now, but Cyril's massive damage output, easy access to death blow, and attack speed proofing point blank volley is having him hold his own. If your only competition is Leone, and Petra, then it's not like you're doing a bad job, okay? He's not competing to be Caspar 2.0 or something. So that's my take on him as a unit. How about as a character? At worst, he's a coolie workhorse who doesn't have patience for people not named Rhea. But like, he's a 14 year old kid with a work ethic. Sorry he isn't some refined noble with crest drama. But in all seriousness, bringing down and comparing and contrasting other characters is never a great defense for someone else's case. So what does Cyril offer through his supports? Many people say he's too focused on pleasing Rhea, that it's detrimental, annoying, boring, and holds back on his potential as a character. And I will say that yes, his devotion, while understandable, can be seen as grating to some, I think some perspective could help here. Cyril isn't a student at the Officer's Academy. His role primarily is to be a maintenance worker slash janitor for the monastery as a whole. This is his job. The reason why, just like the other orphans taken into the monastery, he gets to stay here. This isn't summer camp like it might be for someone like Hilda, and he can't goof around all the time like Sylvain does. When he is approached by cast members, he is impatient with them because they are holding up the tasks that need to get done. Tasks that are assigned by Rhea and Sedith. And I think that's relatable. This isn't a vacation, it's a job. Through these examples, you'll also notice that he's unapologetically mean at times. He doesn't tend to be friendly with people because he has a cynical view of friendship. As revealed in the very charming Mercedes chain, he doesn't want friends because he doesn't want to be treated like an outsider. As an Elmiron working in Fodlin, specifically here, it brings up painful memories. Even though he likes these people, he's almost afraid of being friends with them. It's revealed in the Ash support that he never had a friend before. Ash serves as a foil for him, teaching him valuable life lessons about camaraderie and dependence. I'll take a share of the punishment. What? Why? You did nothing wrong. <laughs> it's true. We're friends though, aren't we? Friends gotta get punished together too? I don't know about all that. I wouldn't put it like that. I'd say friends stick together through good and bad. So let's split the blame. That's what friends are for. Wow, so that's what friends are for. On a similar note, he generally doesn't want help at his job because he doesn't want to feel like he's not doing his part. Cyril is on point and unapologetically truthful on his assessments of people as well, directly calling out Hilda's and Manuela's personality flaws right in front of them. 
even bringing to light the privilege that Ignatz gets to have as a student at the academy. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? I've accepted you from the start. I mean, you're so helpful. You do everything I ask. That's not acceptance. That's relying on somebody else to do your work. What you ought to do is be a grown-up who your brother doesn't need to worry about so much. I'm plenty grown up. I just brought food and water for the horses, all on my own. Being proud of doing what you're supposed to be doing just means you're lazy the rest of the time. Though, I gotta admit, being relied on is kinda nice. Serum, be honest. What's wrong with me? You drink too much, blame others for your behavior, and you don't understand you gotta love yourself before someone else can love you back. There's nothing about Almira worth talking about. But I find it all so fascinating. Please, tell me about the people, the buildings, the flowers. Ooh, any scenery you liked looking at? Nope, never took much time to look at anything. Why do I gotta talk about stuff I don't wanna talk about just because you're bored, Ignatz? On a similar note, he generally doesn't want help at his job because he doesn't want to feel like he's not doing his part. The above savage lines are also an indication that despite his age and social status, he possesses Ike tier levels of emotional tact and thoughtfulness. He's not afraid, at all, to tell it like it is. A personality trait that you'd think more people would highlight, but I digress. Claude is humbled and apologizes for his conceit when he speaks with Cyril in their C support, and in their B support, he serves as a foil for him, making this support in particular one of the more down-to-earth and serious ones that Claude has. But he also contributes to understanding the social landscape and tensions between Elmira and Fodlin, which is valuable, and heck, his over-devotion to Rhea is a concern that is actually full-on addressed in a nicely done set of support exploring Cyril's potential as a person. It's just that I cannot help but notice the way you squander your potential. It's as though you avert your gaze from it on purpose. Keep what I've said in the back of your mind, at least. You have plenty of time. Okay, Sedith. And if you have time, read his support chain with Lysithia. It literally made me well up a bit. I can't remember the last time a support has made me feel that way. This is all to say that yes, I will concede that a 14 year old orphan might not have the most thought provoking backstory or wildly unique character, but there are many moments in his characterization that are worthy of praise, just like everyone else in the cast. I see the criticisms about his devotion to his work or Rhea being too annoying for people, but in reading these supports, I just can't agree that that's what he's mostly contributing to as far as his own characterization goes. So, if you don't believe me, read supports in light of this, and maybe you'll gather a deeper appreciation for Cyril. In summary, as a unit, growths and bases don't tell the whole story, and he really can be an asset in the extreme short term and with long term investment. And as a character, he, like all characters in the game, has engaging and enlightening moments in his support conversations that are definitely worth looking into.